So I had a video planned today talking about LSU, primarily their offense led by Garrett Nussmeyer after an epic performance in the Relia Quest Bowl against Wisconsin. But Brian Kelly decided to throw a wrench in my plans because he fired his entire defensive staff. So let's talk about that first, and then we'll get to the offense later. But if you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy, plus anything going on with the transfer portal, national championship news, or whatever nonsense fills our favorite sport, make sure that you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment telling me your thought on who should be the right defensive coordinator in Baton Rouge for 2024? Tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, the drunk dude passed out in a public's parking lot, LSU fans and college football aficionados everywhere about this channel because we are on the race to become the number one YouTube show talking college football daily. Follow me on social media. I call it Twitter. You can call it X who gives a flat rat's ass about what Elon calls it at Mr. Cole Thompson. That way, conversations surrounding our favorite sport never have to stop flowing. So. Brian Kelly, he cleaned house. He literally cleaned house. There is not a defensive staff member left to have a breadcrumb after a 10-win season. Uh, coordinator, Matt House is fired. Kerry Cooks, the safeties coach, is fired. Quarterbacks coach, Robert Steeples is fired. And Jimmy Lindsay, the defensive line coach, all will not be retained. According to a statement released by Brian Kelly, here's the statement. I want to thank each of these coaches for their work on behalf of the football program and our institution during their time here. Decisions like these are difficult and we do not make them lightly, but we are made for the best interests of our program and our student athletes in mind. Moving forward, we will continue to build a championship caliber coaching staff in support of our mission to graduate champions. Now, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. I thought LSU had a downtrodden year. I thought LSU had a lackluster season. And you're probably saying to yourself, but Cole, how can you say that? How can you say that the Tigers that went 10-3 and three found a way to once again put up double-digit wins with Brian Kelly at the helm, have the number one offense in all of college football, have a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback, a Bolitnikoff award-winning but didn't win it, Malik Neighbors at wide receiver, another future superstar at the NFL level in Brian Thomas, a good rushing attack, a decent offensive line. How can you say we had a down season? The guys who were fired is why you had a down season. Play case in point. Change had to come to Baton Rouge because this was a year where if you go back and remember week one, we were talking about LSU and Florida State as this being a game that could determine the outcome of the season. It didn't for LSU because they also lost to Ole Miss and Alabama in the process. But if they were to lose in week one, they couldn't afford to lose another game. That defense was shredded alive. Jordan Travis went off. Keon Coleman showed the world, hey, I wasn't a problem in East Lansing. East Lansing was a problem for me. I had excellent rapport with guys like Jaheim Bell and Johnny Wilson. And you all thought at that point, okay, well, Florida State's really damn good. Florida State can win a national title. And maybe they could have, but we'll never know in the world of college football. Thanks to the bureaucrats, I'm not getting into that much of a detail. And that was the first time when you said to yourself, okay, LSU lost, but they still control their own destiny. And then the shootout started to happen. And then you started to see quarterbacks have not only successful games, but career-defining games against you. And it wasn't just one. It was multiple. It was Alabama having an epic performance in a 42-28 victory in Bryant Denny Stadium. It's Missouri going 49-39, back-and-forth battle. Brady Cook throwing for, if I'm not mistaken, it was like, what, 425 yards? Ole Miss, you lose on the Grove. Jack, not to mention, he also had 389 passing yards. And at the end of the day, your defense was far from not just a problem. It was the thing completely holding you back. That's what this is. This was a defense that ranked 105th nationally in total yards, 416 yards per game. That's not okay. That will never be the standard. Down in Baton Rouge. It doesn't matter if it's Brian Kelly leading the charge, Nick Saban leading the charge, Ed Orgeron leading the charge, Les Miles leading the charge. You dig up the grave of one of the great coaches of the 1930s. 416 yards is never going to be acceptable down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's not the standard. And there's a reason why we hold, especially in the SEC more than anywhere else, coordinators at a different level. Because usually in those states, usually in those areas, college football reigns supreme and the NFL is second tier. 
You talk to many people that live in the greater swamp area of Baton Rouge. They talk about the Tigers. They want to know what's going on with the Tigers. And the Saints content is just like, okay, cool. I know who the linebackers coach is. Or I've heard of this guy who plays cornerback coach. You don't do that at LSU. You know who Matt House is. You know who Mike Denbrock is. You know who are calling the shots for your offense and defense. And this was a defense riddled with good talent. Now, the cornerback position, I'm going to go ahead and give a pass on. There was lackluster play throughout the entire year. And Denver Harris getting in trouble, despite being a top 10 prospect, didn't really help your case. But you guys had Makai Wingo. They had Mason Smith up the middle. They had Harold Perkins at linebacker, the SEC reigning newcomer of the year. They had talent in the front seven to where you would say, well, if we're giving up a lot of yards downfield, but we're still able to generate a pass rush, maybe we'll be fine. Nope, that wasn't the case either. Uh, you allowed teams to average 45.5 points per game. You were ranked in the bottom half in every single category in the uh, in the SEC. And yards allowed, only one team was worse than you. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt that went two and uh, that went three and nine. That Vanderbilt team, that one. Yeah. You want to tell me right now, Vanderbilt is your standard? I don't think so. So for LSU, this is a good thing. Change need to come. Change absolutely need to be brought to Tiger Stadium if you want a shot of competing for a national title. And I think what was the breaking point is very similar to what you look at with USC. USC had Alex Grinch as their defensive coordinator, but who did they have as their starting quarterback? Jay, uh, Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, in year one, led USC to a Pac-12 title game. They lost to Utah. Okay, bygones be bygones. You don't get that done. But you played in a New Year's Six Bowl and not a college football playoff, so you don't have a shot of winning a national title. And then the next year rolls around, and you don't have a shot of winning a national title because of who your defense coordinator was. It's the same field down in Tiger Stadium right now. Jaden Daniels will have one of the most epic performances we have seen in a hot minute in the world of college football. The offense will rank number one in total yards. They were phenomenal when it came to utilizing the run game. Even with a guy like Daniels or Logan Diggs or whoever else took reps, you had exceptional wide receiver play. Your offensive line did its job blocking long enough for Daniels to make a play, whether that be with his legs in the open field or whether that be slinging it 40 yards downfield to connect with Brian Thomas or Malik Neighbors, both of which I expect to be first-round talents. And it was wasted on a 9-3 and regular season finish. LSU is going to be fine offensively. They always are. Will they be number one next year in every ranking? I don't think so. I do think you will see some bit of regression from Garrett Nussmeyer or A.J. Swan if he does win the starting job. You will see a bit of a setback. But not enough to where you're saying to yourself, we can't make it to Atlanta. We can't make it to the college football playoff, and we can't win the whole shindig. Not that much. But with this defense and with the coordinators that you had on staff currently, you would be 8-4. and four. I brought this up to people before, and I've had this conversation off air with many a names. What would LSU be this past year with this defense and no Jaden Daniels? I've heard some people say 3-9. and nine. I think it's closer to 7-5, and five, personally. I think that with the roster constructed, you probably would have lost to Arkansas. So chalk that one up as an L. The three teams that you lost to, and you probably wouldn't have beaten Texas A&M at the very end of the season because Jaden Daniels decided to go straight Vegeta mode in the second half. But besides that, you still would have won games. But 7-5 and five is never going to cut it in the Baton Rouge area. 7-5 and five will never cut it in Tigers country. 9-3 and three barely cuts it. The only positive is that you can say by the season's end, we didn't have 10 wins next to our name because you didn't last year too. And winning is the ultimate culture builder that you need for a program like LSU, which is why Brian Kelly's seat is nowhere near scorching, even if people want to make it out to be. 20 wins in two years, I would immediately take that over some of the other shindigs that have been going on in the world of college football. But change is needed. And so now you're getting a new coordinator in there. I don't know what direction you go, but you do have an abundance of money. So you can afford whoever you want. Jim Leonard, who was the former defensive coordinator at Wisconsin, would be my first phone call. That would be probably maybe my second phone call. And I would wait for him to tell me no. Because of right now, he's not a coordinator. He's an analyst. And doesn't he want to get back to call in place? If not him, I go after Blake Baker from Missouri. The turnaround of that defense over the last two years has been the reason and the backbone to why the offense is allowed to flounder 
and not play up to par every single week. Because if you know you're going to get a good stop, you're going to force a three and out, and Blake Baker is the cause of that one. And lastly, I would consider Zach Arnett. I know that there is a sour taste in his mouth right now because of the job that he did at Mississippi State. But you have to realize, Mississippi State actually did turn the corner when he was a coordinator and only calling plays for one side of the field underneath Mike Leach. He may not be head coaching material, but I can tell you this much, there was a reason why Nick Saban at least implored a few years ago if Zach Arnett was interested about becoming his defensive coordinator, so why wouldn't Brian Kelly do the same? You've seen growth, you've seen adaptability, and you've watched his players at Starkville make the jump to the NFL's first-round talents. Emmanuel Forbes is a cornerback that led the SEC in interceptions. You don't think that if you had Emmanuel Forbes on your team being taught by a guy like Zach Arnett, your roster wouldn't have been better? And maybe it's an 11-2 and season instead of a 10-3? and You want a guy like Arnett. But regardless, whoever you add in, you can afford. You can force a coach to tell you no. You can force somebody to give you an arm stretch and twist you until you give them what they want or until they say, I'm good where I'm at. That's what LSU has to do this offseason because the offense is going to be fine next year. I like what I saw from Garrett Nussmeyer in spurts. I saw it last season a little bit as well in spurts. There's a reason why you feel opportunistic if you are a Tigers fan. Defensively, though, you got to make the right hire because as long as you're in the SEC and you have coming up teams, and yes, these are come up teams, Missouri, I'll throw Kentucky in the mix, Ole Miss is going to stick around. You watch Nico Iamaliava's performance, it's enough for me to say the kid's got some moxie that could end up defeating a couple of teams that are ranked. All of them are going to be alongside LSU, gutting for a spot in the college football playoff right next to Georgia and right next to Alabama. You make the wrong hire at defensive coordinator, you're looking at eight and four, nine and three once again. And eight and four and nine and three might be fine in Lexington. They're okay in Nashville. They're great in Columbia, South Carolina. It's the furthest thing from successful in the eyes of the Baton Rouge faithful. So you need to make sure that this hire, regardless of the pay race, is the one that sets you over the top. LSU had a shot this past year to make it to the national championship. They floundered their opportunity because of their defense. Now you have a chance to right the wrongs but you better do it with the right name. And that also includes his staff that works in with them. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.